Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and with me today I have two guests. We're going to be talking about leadership because one thing Rotary does and does quite well is train our leaders, and that way we have the efficiency to move this organization forward. With me, first of all, I have Marta Golding Brown. Welcome, Marta. Hi, Wade. Thank you. And we have Tony Huff also. Tony? Thanks, thank Wade. Thank you for coming, the both of you. Uh, Marta, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have been a Rotary president twice, and I've worked on district committees and as assistant district governor a few times and been in two different Rotary districts. And I feel, believe very strongly about professional development, and this is one avenue that I can t uh, work with. So tell me about your profession. I am a government affairs director for the Association of Realtors, Ventura County Coastal. Got it. Okay. And what got you into Rotary? Wanting to give back to my community. And uh, it started at a youthful age. We were raised, my father was in Lions Club, and I was in 4-H and Girl Scouts. And when I became an adult, I looked for a way to get back to my community, and Rotary was the answer. Mm, very good. And did you have any stories about how you got involved? Did you call? Did somebody... I was approached. It was the one-on-one -on -one okay. ask, which is, you know, they always say that's the way. And someone that I knew approached me and said, have you thought about Rotary? And I happened to be in the place where I was, it was that time to start getting back into giving to the community and joining in uh, activities and it was just the right time the right place and it happened the very next week great <laughs> good story there tony how about you tell us a little about yourself uh, i've also been i've been a rotary president once and i'm about halfway through being a rotary president <laughs> second my second time around okay i was approached by a friend of mine who i worked with who, by the way, is still in Rotary, and he's now president, or he's actually the, the media past president of the Rotary Club that I was president first. So uh, I've been involved in Rotary since, uh, my gosh, 25 years, 24 wow. years, something like that. Uh, and I've been involved with the Pearls program uh, for at least 15 years, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's up to 15 years, both as a site coordinator, uh, et cetera. Uh, in a registrar and basically have done a lot in the in the Pearls program and, and enjoyed almost every minute of it. <laughs> good, good. And how about your professional life, personal life? I'm an accountant. You're an accountant. I've uh, worked at all levels of accounting. Uh, lately, over the last oh, 10 or 15 years, normally a consulting role, a temp assignments consulting role uh, in various assignments uh, throughout Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, et cetera. Got it. Thank you. Marta, I'm going to start with you then. Uh, since you are the director of Pearls currently for the district, tell us a little bit about the program. Well, when I became director, Wade, uh, we took the program from a five or six session program. The introductory uh, course was is basically two, two and a half hours, and it remains as such. But then after that, if they wanted to do the graduate or master Pearls, which is professional relevant leadership skills and follow that program, it used to be five Saturdays to complete the program. And, and at the time that I completed it, I was traveling about three and a half to four hours each direction to take the courses. And I, I just don't think that in this day and age, people have five Saturdays to give when you consider family life and soccer and baseball and softball, that sort of thing. So, you know, my idea was to bring it into a weekend type course and uh, the Pearls team agreed that that might be the right thing to do and they had been talking about it as well so we now have the all five sessions in a condensed format and it's half a day friday all day saturday a long day saturday and then a little over half a day on sunday and it seems to work out very well sounds good and tony what do you think about the change with the uh, experience you've had in I, pearls i think uh this weekend concept has been very successful I'm, and I'm not surprised by it. I know it's something that we've talked about in the past before Marta got here. We just never implemented it. One of the features that we do, people can, can come in and take all five courses, or they can take courses individually if they want, if they need one course to graduate or two courses to graduate. Uh, our, and I can't tell you what the statistics are, but, I, but, our, but our Master Pearls graduates, have the numbers have really grown, and we've been very successful with it. And, and to a large degree, we can thank Marta for implementing it Great. because we talked about it and we just never did it. So, <laughs> so with Marta's influence, we finally pushed it through. I think the synergy was there. <laughs> well, it was always there. I, I really think because uh, 
We just didn't know how to implement it. Got it. So tell us about the uh, goals and objectives of the session, the program. The program is to, is to help Rotarians and presidents coming up, or people who want to advance their skills in Rotary, it's to help them, but it also helps individuals in their professional life. So it teaches them about leadership skills, working with volunteers, communications, uh, how to communicate both on a formal level and an informal level, level facilitation of um, projects, projects and programs, grants, how to achieve grant writing and, re and receiving grants both at the district level and international level. So it really is a wide range of skills that are taught through the courses. Sounds good. Tony, I want to ask you a quick question. You've seen a, a lot of these classes as they progress and as people go through the program. What could you say about the benefits of those that have gone through the program? Do you see the changes at all? I think one of the benefits that I've gotten to see uh, as these groups, various groups come through, even in the old days when we were going a weekend at a time, is to see the leadership growth for people that started the program that were kind of nervous, refused to talk, refused to lead, to when they get out, when they're graduating the Master Pearls Five, have no trouble leading, have no trouble uh, uh, taking over a group. And uh, you can really, really individually see the growth in most people, not all people, but most people. Got it. Oh, thank you. Um, we got some pictures that you brought with us. Uh, let's jump into the pictures. So the first picture we have is a picture that looks like of a class setting. Marty, you want to tell us a little bit about that one? So the first picture is our most recent Master Pearls 5, uh, or the Master Pearls session. They completed all five courses, and it was in uh, Oxnard. We try to move the Master Pearls sessions and the intro sessions around our district. Our district is quite large, and we move it around the, the district. So the first class of this Rotary year was in Oxnard, California. And those were the uh, members that either attended all five of the courses on that weekend, and I believe we had two that made up one class to finish their courses. So like Tony said, you can take them all at once or separately. Great, great. Next picture we have is a picture of uh, you in the picture, so <laughs> tell us a little about that so one. So we were in Bakersfield, and that was our Master Pearls 5. Those, it was a large class. It was a very good cohort that came through in Bakersfield. <laughs> And we had some people that drove over, and uh, that was one of our more successful classes. Got it. Okay. Uh, next picture we have is, um, got one more picture with you in there, Marta. So that was, uh, I believe, that was Oxnard first and Bakersfield second. Correct? Okay. Is that, Did I refer? Re it, that's no problem. So <laughs> anyways, it looks like it's two classes that you, you ran we both did, of right. those. Very good. The next picture we have, uh, Tony, you may want to tell us a little bit about that one. This was an intro class, uh, I believe, that you taught up in Visalia, District 5230, which is a, dis a different district than we're in. Uh, it was a very successful class. I'm not going to count the people, but uh, <laughs> there's at least 15 people. And you were in it, Wade, as an instructor, and our, our last director, Jack, is also in it. And it was, it just was, it was a very successful class outside of our district. So we were spreading, spreading the Pearl's, Pearl's message to different districts. Very good. Thank you. Next one, we have um, one more picture here. Uh, I think, uh, Marty, you may have some background on this one, right? Uh, it was one of the other uh, Master Pearl's class. I believe this is in Ventura. Is this a Ventura yeah, class? Right. I believe this was before I took over the program. Okay. So I, I don't have, it was just in the archives okay. that we have for the Pearl's nice. courses. Very yes. nice. Showing a different... I would say a different cross-section right. of the district exactly. people. Right. Okay, good. Uh, next picture, uh, Tony, um, I think that one might have been you helping out with that one. That was, I believe, an Interact class. Is that correct? That is an Interact class, yes. Uh, we have uh, a, one Interact class per year. Interact, of course, is our uh, high school age uh, Rotarians. And that was an inter a very successful Interact class that we had uh, at... Uh, uh, in Thousand Oaks at the, uh, at the Best Western Inn. And uh, again, uh, Wade was the instructor, so what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little about this then. Uh, is it the same curriculum or different curriculum for high school? We changed the curriculum around a little bit to, to kind of tone it down. And I can't remember which one this is because I know we, uh, uh, one was, uh, this was, I believe, your version of intro, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. 
I think that, that, that was a class, which is our introduction to, uh, uh, to Rotary, basically. It's uh, what do we do as Rotarians? We have changed that around to, uh, I believe you did phil facilitation skills the last time. Right that's, right. that's the next class. Good, good. So the next picture we have, uh, next few pictures actually are mixed classes. One that we did in the, I think this is in the Ventura area, followed by the other one, which is in the Bakersfield area, correct? Yes. Good. We have uh, the next picture. I'll actually cover this one because I don't think you guys were uh, <laughs> part of this program, but this was actually a, a picture of a class in Zimbabwe. You wouldn't let us go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> we tried. Not on our budget. <laughs> Trust me, on our budget, we're tight. <laughs> But uh, that was actually in Zimbabwe, and that was a rollout of their first class, their first session. So um, looking at that one, I think uh, the success was in the following picture, we have a picture now of the actual graduating class, and you can see how successful that was. Yeah. District-wide, they, they were outstanding on, on what they did. They are probably one of the four, I believe, four different countries right now that we have pearls in. So that is one of the great things that I, I see pearls helping out. It's actually a universal isn't curriculum. It, isn't it your charge way to further extend the Pearls program throughout the world? Actually, actually it is. It's one of the benefits I think we as uh, Rotarians give back to mm -hmm. the organization. To share. Creating these leaders. Uh, right. Having effective leaders, and this was the vision of the original, was to actually create leadership to where you have more effective clubs. They can do a lot more with mm -hmm. that leadership specific. Absolutely. So I think that's it. The next slide we have actually shows the five classes that we um, are offering. We have of those facilitation skills, leading without authority, effective communications, planned public speaking, and business and project planning. So that's the curriculum we currently have. Jumping into the first one, this slide talks about facilitation skills. So um, Marta, tell us a little bit about what facilitation skills is all about. Well, quite frankly, Wade, it's one of my favorite classes to teach and also to watch. So you start with a group of individuals who come with all skill sets, all skill levels, and we work with them on different techniques to facilitate a meeting. And this is supposed to help presidents, obviously, and people coming, uh, leading committees and projects through the program. So we start with leading a meeting, we talk about decision making and how to come to a decision and different techniques to, to help make decisions in group settings. We talk about creating consensus and conflict resolution because inevitably when you're coming to a, con to a meeting uh, with a group of individuals and coming to a decision, there's, there may be likely will be conflicts that need to be resolved and how to do that in a good, meaningful way. So this is, uh, I would say, more than just relevant in Rotary. It could be in personal Absolutely. life. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest Work big setting, advantages. your family setting, for that matter. True. Where to go on vacation. Okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> gets a vote. That's a rough one. That's a real rough one. <laughs> and then the next picture shows actually part of the class. I think um, the yes. picture reflects actually the participation of the individual because some right. people feel it's going to be all lecturing, but which is not the case. No. So how do we divide that up? So we facilitate. We help them facilitate a meeting or a decision with, within the class, and it teaches them the different skills. So we can give them, they'll come up to flip charts, we'll work on them in small groups, we'll break up the class depending upon the size, and then we give them different skills to practice dis coming up with uh, decisions for scenarios. Great, good idea. So they get practical application of this. They do. Throughout, right. very good. Uh, the next one is leading without authority. Tony, I'm gonna have you cover this one, since you have no authority. Well, <laughs> <laughs> one of the problems in, and it's not a problem by the way, uh, in Rotary, you really don't have the authority of uh, signing somebody's paycheck. You're leading a group that can basically do whatever they want to. So how do you get them to follow you? Uh, how do you teach them effective leadership? How do you manage them because you have basically no authority over them? And you match the leadership styles and personality. How do you match the leadership styles and personalities for, for best results? Uh, if you're in a business situation, obviously you have the authority because you're the one that's uh, maybe not the one that's signing their paycheck but you're gonna be involved as one is signing the paycheck. And in Rotary, you don't have a paycheck to sign, but you want them to follow you. So you do, to, do it through your lectures. 
and try to match their leadership skills and their personalities for best results. Uh, I have seen the results of this class uh, and it's usually very, very effective. Very good. So a lot of it has to do with, I would say, motivating, um, teaching these people how to motivate and create that consensus. Yes. And, and, and moving it, forward in with my a, opinion, a goal. It, it comes from your enthusiasm in, in trying to, to, uh, to sell the product, not trying to sell it, you're trying to lead them, but your enthusiasm has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. If you're enthusiastic, they're going to be enthusiastic. So it's picking the right thing also then. Right. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, next one is effective communication. Um, Martin, let's talk about that one. Well, Wade, you know there are a lot of ways to communicate, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there's verbal, there's nonverbal, there's uh, written communication, and these are all skills that combined um, can help any leader. And you need to have the right skill set and, and use the right tools for the right discussion or the right um, need that's out there. And we work, again, we work with that. We give them di different scenarios. We talk about how to do a PowerPoint presentation and how to have the right slides and not have them too full. You know, have, have simple slides and then have effective verbal communication that goes along with the slide and then visual pictures that go with them as well. Simply, but very much like what you've done today in your television program where you have pictures of people and then you explain why they're there and what they're doing. Communication is the best way not only to get across to your members but also to to get out to the public when you're working on a project and to include them and to find other people who want to contribute as well. Very good. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess you wouldn't be a leader without being able to communicate. <laughs> that is indeed the case. <laughs> um, the next one we have is actually an elective class and that's planned public speaking. Uh, Tony, tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, it's, it's meant to follow effective commu communication, which is uh, gestures, uh, how, to, how to present a, a speech, and then plan public speaking, uh, you actually are, you, you're allowed to, to uh, do your own agenda or plan it and present it uh, so you deliver the message, uh, you try to create an action, and uh, you try to leave a lasting memory in what you're telling the people, but you plan it. In other words, you use effective communication, the first part of it, on the techniques, and the second part of it is, is planned uh, in order to present a more formal approach to, to public speaking. Now, one thing that we have done in the weekend program, we have combined effective communication and planned public speaking, uh, so it's condensed, but we still get the message across, in my opinion. Good, very good. Uh, next picture we have actually is uh, one of the plugs. Marty, you talked about it, and that's our TV show. So, um, by the way, since uh, JP's not here today, uh, he's, he's out sick, I got a back picture of JP. He said never once <laughs> mentioned him in the TV show. So we actually have a picture of him up there. And JP, hope you're feeling better. <laughs> next one we have is um, talk about business and project planning. So, uh, Marty, tell us a little bit about that one. So in this module in the program, we talk about how best to develop a project or a program, how to step through those, those issues and those decisions with your Rotary Club members, and then talking about bringing in collaborators, other organizations, other money. So you know how, how to move forward with a project. And sometimes Rotary Clubs are able to do very large projects. In fact, I think Wade, your Rotary Club has done one of the largest that I've ever heard of, which is just... <laughs> phenomenal, but it's very important for people to understand how to do that and how to talk about a project from beginning to end and how to look at the details as well as the, the larger scope of things. Good. And this is actually the graduating part of the leadership program it itself. And do you have any idea what the percentages of those projects that were developed in this last class actually come to fruition? I'm not sure about the last class, but I know overall it, it's about 85 to 90 percent of wow. those projects that wow. we talk about actually move forward and, and are fulfilled. Wow. So we're actually um, implementing the plan of teaching leadership with getting these projects done. We are. So the we effectiveness are. Definitely, definitely reflects itself. It's been very effective. Wow, that's great. And in other districts as well. True. Yeah, very true. Tony, um, next picture we have, uh, next slide we have is a picture of three pictures actually of some of the successes of different projects that were developed during that class. You want to tell us about uh, those? 
number one, there's a picture of a bandstand. Uh, it's in Arroyo Grande. It happened to have been, been a centennial project. I don't know the value or how much money uh, was developed for it. I know it was a very successful program. Mm -hmm. There's also a picture uh, uh, of, the, of the park in Carpinteria, which I know, Wade, you, of course, were intimately involved with. And I believe that started out on a relatively low scale and ended up being mil not a millions of dollars, but a lot of money. <laughs> a, was, a million was, dollars. A million dollars was <laughs> a project, a, yeah. Was a million dollar project, was, sure. and it's just a, uh, it's just a, a gorgeous park and involves water, et cetera. And the third one is a clean water project in Mexico. And you see, and, and you guys can't see it, but you see a, a guy uh, holding two bottles of water. One's clean, one's dirty. So what we are doing is trying to promote clean water, and in this case, at least in Mexico. All of these projects were developed by Rotary, and in some cases were developed in the project, in our Master Pearls 5 projects class. Great. All right, so um, let's get back to the program itself and talk a little bit about that. The idea is, is that we take uh, individuals and try and create them into leaders. How are we promoting that, or how do you promote the program itself? Is that something you found is a challenge? It has been challenging to promote the program, and I think part of it is people don't always understand the skill sets uh, that they'll receive and how widely they can use it throughout their life, but typically, we promote it through our district webpage, through our district calendar, district newsletters, and then we send the flyers out through the presidents and the assistant governors through the district. And um, for those that say, well, we don't need it because we've already had all the education and leadership, how many times have you heard that and what, what have you seen of that? I see them come into class later and say, this was well worth my time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Um, I had one example where we had uh, two professors come in from the Carnegie program and they actually pirated all our information, and they're teaching that at the district level now <laughs> instead of using Carnegie. So it s talks a lot and says a lot about the program itself. It's a very good program. Um, Tony, uh, how about you? What, did, what would you say was one of the more rewarding instances of somebody you could think about that went through the program and changed 180 degrees? Uh, I can think of one individual uh, that was so meek and mild when she started. She wouldn't speak, or she had trouble speaking. And by the time she got out of Master Pearls 5, she would speak very clearly, uh, was a leader. Uh, uh, I, I'm not gonna mention names, but uh, she became a very effective leader, and she wasn't a very effective leader when she started. She just was too meek and mild. Good. So she learned how to speak out. And that's what we're hoping for. Exactly, exactly. That's one good example. Uh, I've heard of actually an instance where a governor had gone through the same process, never wanting to be a governor, went through the program and actually became a governor later on in her career, Rotary career. So um, when we look at what we have to offer, um, the Pearls program, and we talk about leadership, and we talk about the projects that are completed and done, where do you think an average Rotarian would fit in? Because we talk about leaders, but would this benefit everybody, Tony? Uh, I honestly can't think of any, anybody that it wouldn't benefit, and I mean that. Uh, either Rotarians or, uh, or people outside of Rotary. You pick up so much, you pick up sometimes little things. I, I'm kind of damaged by it because every time I see a speech, I'm thinking of... Uh, gestures and what gestures were wrong somebody banging on the podium so you so you think no you shouldn't be doing that you know you, we got to be able to hear you uh, everybody could learn something good, good. <laughs> that made him a better speaker or an effective leader good good how about you Marta? oh i think that this is beneficial for anyone and everyone <coughs> in fact I've encouraged uh, friends of mine to go through the program and my daughter for that matter. So she used to come sit in the back of the room <laughs> nice. and listen. And I think that she's obtained skills just being in the room and being about Rotary, you know, in and around the Rotary world, quite frankly. Great. Um, back to you as director. How do you select your um, instructors? 
You know, they, we have a message that we want to convey, and I want to make sure that they're willing to convey the message that we've asked them to convey. That's always important. Uh, it's a team effort, and we need to work as a team, and so we want to make sure that the information is consistent uh, throughout the classes, throughout the instructors, and throughout the years. So we do modify it. We update the curriculum. We try to keep it um, pertinent to today's world, and I think it is, and I think the timing has been and the team is very important to make sure that that's implemented in the same way. Great, and Tony, the evolution, you've been in the pro program for as long as I've been in Rotary. So tell us a little bit about how it started and where it's evolved to, what you've seen. Well, it, it, it started as a very, very basic program. And what we do, so everybody understands it, is once we finish a pro once we finish the class, we have the, the classes evaluated by the students. We go through those evaluations, and anything that we see, especially if it's more than uh, one comment, we implement it in that curriculum for the next class. So we keep improving upon it and improving upon it, and it's, it's a very important process because what did you get out of it? If you didn't get something out of it, why didn't you? Can we improve it? Yes, we'd like to improve it. And so we try at each stage to improve everything we're doing. Some cases we don't need to improve, it, but, but that doesn't happen very often. Great. Well, thank you both for, for being here. The uh, program sounds outstanding. We hope to see it in the future around the Rotary world. And with that, everybody, take a look at the PEARLS program. See what it has to offer for you. And with that, we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Good job,